First of all, uh, I want to ask, you're the MD and CEO of a very large company, 50,000 crore uh, in revenue, uh, which happened under your watch. Hindustan Unilever Limited has crossed fifth, this year 50,000 crores in revenue. How much? Uh, it is not a valuation, it's the revenue, the market cap, you can check the latest market cap. In an era where we don't talk revenues and we talk valuations, it's good to know. I want to know how much are you, I know you started as a consumer marketer, you're a chartered accountant, and you grew in the Unilever ecosystem, uh, Philippines, Indonesia. How much do you involve yourself still in marketing? I know you have a very large team, there is yeah. executive directors, Sure. CMOs, brand managers, but how much is your involvement? So your question is, as a CEO, where do I spend my most time, right? So I would give you a few blocks where I spend my most time. First is performance management, yeah? As a CEO, you can never take your eyes off the ball. That's extremely important. And the rigor we have in HUL is absolutely amazing. We are a huge data-led business, and everything is analyzed, sliced, looked at it, till we are satisfied that we are in the right direction. So first is this. Second is capability building. I spend a huge amount of time. We started this Reimagine HUL journey, and our intent is very clear about six years back, and our intent is very clear. We want to be the most intelligent consumer goods enterprise. And this is not just about marketing, this is about the whole ecosystem. And uh, I'll just give you a few examples. Today our Shaker app is the most adopted app in the market, adopted by more than one million retailers. Our factory is the first factory in FMCG in the country which has been recognized by World Economic Forum as a lighthouse factory for digitization. So capability building to me is the second most important bit. And the third important bit is uh, talent and leadership. Yeah, how do we ensure that we remain the employer of choice? How do we ensure that our employer brand remains strong? How do we build our leaders so that the tag CO factory remains with HUL? And very importantly, succession planning. Fantastic. Uh, Mr. Mehta, let me also ask you another question. Uh, you know from your personal experience that D2C brands are in, okay? You know what I'm saying. You built your business on traditional retail. I know that uh, two years back when we were doing an interaction and you talked about how you were building an e-commerce ecosystem. That's right. Uh, and you said, Anurag, you'd be surprised uh, by what we are likely to achieve over the next two, three years. Yeah. Are you likely to see acquiring D2C brands that look promising? Okay. Uh, are you incubating such businesses? Okay. First, incubating, absolutely. Yeah, I have a premium beauty business unit which is dedicated to incubating digital first brands. Yeah, and that's working out extremely well where what we have done is carved it out separately, and they're running it like entrepreneurs, but they have the anchor of HUL. So if they mon need money, they don't have to run to anyone else to get money, is uh, the zero debt HUL is able to provide them money. So we are incubating a huge amount. The second important bit is acquisition strategy. Yeah. We will not acquire brands because it's a fad. We will acquire a brand if it makes strategic sense, if it makes sense to acquire rather than build, and very importantly, the valuation is right. Yeah? Right. And are we on the lookout? Yes, we are on the lookout, but uh, we're always on the lookout. In the last few years, we've made some great acquisitions. We started with Indulekha, and it was a small brand, 50 crores, now it's 400 crores in five years time. Yeah, then we did a wonderful Aditya milk in south of India to improve our footprints in uh, ice cream. Then we had We Wash, which is an intimate female hygiene brand, 
and then we had the mother of all acquisitions, which was merging GSK Consumer Health with us. So acquisitions as a strategy is very much on the plate, but uh, will we mindlessly head into it? The answer is no. If it makes strategic sense, if it is at the right cost, the seller is willing to sell, and if we can make sense buying rather than making our own brand, we'll go for it. Uh, Mr. Mehta, there's a new age cosmetics company, beauty brand, that has a distribution tie-up with you. It leverages your distribution. Is there a large... See, see I'll tell you like this, that uh, for any beauty or any brand in India, if your ambitions are small, if you want to be a niche player, you can remain a digital-only brand. But if you want to grow it into a big brand, then you have no options but to go offline also. In the era of digital, in the era of D2C brands, we run D2C conferences, uh, and you know, he has personally understand D2C because his twin daughters have a D2C brand uh, in the wellness space. So clearly, uh, you get till a point with that, and then you need physical retail. That's why I asked, like, sugar kind of leverages your uh, marketing it, muscle. It, it, see, because this is uh, uh, something which is bound to be there in a country like India, yeah? Is today, if you look at all of e-commerce, it is about 6-7% of the market. So more than 90% of the market is still offline, yeah? In our case, our digital demand capture is now more than 20%. So we are far ahead of the curve when it comes to digital demand capture because our capabilities as far as digital is concerned is far ahead of, I would believe, any other consumer goods company in the country. Fantastic. Yeah? Having said that, I think, are we very conscious? And uh, are we learning from digital first brands? Absolutely. I come from a school of thought that we should be learning from every competitor and we should be respecting every competitor. Fantastic. Uh, I have to ask you this. I was talking to Noor when I was preparing for this. And in, though she's out there and she's getting treatment, she's glued on on every second. Ruhail is running the conference for her. And we discussed this question. In every part of the world where Unilever is, uh, now there is a category-wise leadership, right? Only in country, every category and every business head reports to you. So in that sense, you have a unique position. In some way, it is recognition of what you've achieved for Unilever in the last eight years. In some way, it is also recognition of India. Give us a sense of uh, how is it working for you? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, first I believe that the new structure which Unilever has created globally, where we have got business groups, five business groups, is uh, absolutely the right thing for Unilever because it will bring in speed and agility. It will bring in much heightened category focus. And uh, also, it will not lose the power of one Unilever. Yeah? because a lot of capabilities are still one Unilever. Now, India is a very distinct company. Yeah, is, uh, first, we are large. Now, we also are a listed company. And our market cap today is nearly $80 billion. And Unilever's global market cap is about $120 billion. So we are a large part of Unilever's market cap and our minority shareholders are about $30 billion, yeah, non-Unilever shareholding, which is very material. So as a listed company, our job is to look after the interest, not just of the majority shareholder, but also the minority shareholder. So the executive leadership remains with me. So we are going to leverage Unilever's new structure because it will fuel much better innovation, bring in much better speed, but the cohesiveness of one HUL will remain. Fantastic. Uh, my last two questions before I bring in questions from the audience, Mr. Rao, Ankit, 
Rana, gentlemen here and ladies here. I remember six years back at the Impact, I've asked you this question before, and you were a nominee of the Impact Person of the Year that year. You gracefully came. Uh, in India, if you don't win, sometimes you don't show up for awards. And after the awards, uh, Baba Ramdev was the winner, and uh, Patanjali was flying high. And on the way out, I tried, saw you off, and I asked you for your feedback. He said, I don't know, it was good, but my only request is you to dig deeper. That's the only thing you said to me. And tell me, what should we dig deeper about just now? Yeah. In corporate India or in the business world, I'm what glad, do? I'm glad you raised this question. You know, today the flavor of the day in India is unicorns, right? And unicorns is valuations. I think the first important bit you should ask is not valuations, how is value being created? You know, at the end of the day, business comes for a certain purpose. And a successful business has one, it meets the needs of the consumers, which many of those businesses do very well. But the second important bit is you need to have a sustainable business model. There is nothing like a bottomless pit in business. And to sustain, you need to have a business model which is sustainable. And those which have a sustainable business model will succeed in the long run. Yeah, so just don't get swayed by valuations. You need to look at the depth of management, you need to look at the talent, you need to look at the business model and the sustainability of it. I think in the last four months, because of the winter of investing, uh, some of these things have become more important, both for investors and founders. Yeah, yeah, history is rep often repeats itself. We saw this during the dot-com days, but that doesn't mean that there will be great companies in this age which will not flourish and build up into great businesses. So the trick for you journalists is to look at or identify the trees from the woods. That's very important. You know, I remember I was young, uh, one, once upon a time, 20 years back I started, 22 years back I started exchange from India, and I met Mr. Arun Puri, and I have great regard for him, and uh, not patronizing him, I genuinely have great respect for him. Yeah, he's done a great job. Yeah, he's done a great job, and I was having lunch with him, at, you know, and, and I asked him, what is the uh, job of a journalist, what should an editor do? He says, Anurag, very simple. It's to separate the shaft from the grain Absolutely. and then serve the shaft to people. No, I'm kidding. That's what's happening, I think. Uh, that's what he said. That's what news channels are doing, but that's another day. My last question. You take our IT companies. Yeah. Uh, Indian CEOs globally have made their mark and continue to deliver. Whether you take a Microsoft, you take a Google, yeah. you take a Adobe, you take banking, you even take uh, consumer companies like Record Ben Kaiser. Uh, will Unilever see a global CEO who would be Indian with you contributing in India, contributing such a large contribution both in revenue and in value terms to Unilever? Do you see yourself becoming the CEO of Unilever globally? Okay. You know, a journalist has a right to question. I have a right to answer. So I'm going to answer, do I see an Indian ever becoming a CEO of Global Unilever? The answer is, I hope so, and why not? Okay. Yeah. You know, it is definitely a possibility uh, if you look at... I have very carefully answered. <laughs> so we can take some questions at this point. Mr. Rao, can we get... Mike to Mr. Rao. With respect to leaders and creating leaders in this uh, metaverse age, I have a question. How would Unilever yourself approach in creating a dedicated team for this, uh, for, for, for this metaverse campaigns that you have done, uh, the thinking that will set on creating yeah. these campaigns? Yeah. 
is it uh, is it going to be people who have shown up enthusiasm to be part of it or you have a strategy for it a very valid question yeah. you know when we started on the digital journey uh, we first brought in on board people who were uh, very tech savvy yeah you bring them on board you start building capabilities and but you then reach a point where it becomes mainstream today i can't think of a brand manager who doesn't know digital or marketing in the digital world they won't be able to survive so it's become mainstream now so across the organization we have now built capabilities so similarly when it comes to metaverse we are <laughs> building capabilities with a few people and as it grows and expands it will become mainstream where nearly every brand will have to participate in it yeah so that's how we do incubate it then once you reach a point of inflection then ensure that across the organization it becomes a institutional capability and also thanks to you for sharing the strategy and uh, knowledge of uh, hindustan lever consistently for the last few years uh, it's guided uh, many of us in in thinking and the way forward so request you to keep sharing more of this uh, as long as it's not a competitive disadvantage in in the in the sharing part so thanks for that and we appreciate that my question is are companies losing sight of quality offline engagement with their core customers and communities uh in this uh yeah. especially if you take brands like uh, educational institutions and colleges that's right a uh, very valid uh, question yeah so y it's probably not so much about metaverse yeah. but yeah you're right job you're right i have seen businesses who have flipped to the other side at the end of the day you need to understand i have a very deep understanding of who your consumers are what are they doing how do you engage and interact with them say if 100% of your consumers are digital savvy they don't watch the box they don't read the newspapers then you would never get into advertising on television or inserting ads in newspapers but the reality certainly in india is in my industry still 90% plus of the sales are in the physical realm yeah so if you take your eyes off and television today is still the lowest cost way of reaching the consumers we have two television companies yeah. sponsors i'm sure they're <laughs> quite happy about that dangle and times after you reach a certain point then you may want to ask how do you reach now if you are a digital first brand and you're in your initial journey then you would not be looking at going to television yeah you would be just looking at youtube facebook search and going over there but once you reach a certain point then you may say i may want to bring consumers from offline to online yeah and that is why many of the digital first companies are now also advertising on television so important bit is deep understanding of consumers what media they reach what is your job to be done so we can't be prescriptive but it has to be based on the category the brand and the evolution of the brand so short question my question about the industry practice in the metaverse with the government uh, like uh, i have seen your you know campaign about life boy for hygienation so uh, by seeing your videos I, I, uh, is that i want to inside whether we create uh, you know such kind of metaverse videos and practicing where we where, you know personalized metaverse promotion can be done by personal actually you know there are a lot of practicing is required so whether with such kind of approach we can go tell the government to a part of the csr activity or something you know so such kind of view we can encourage the industry yeah. so i want to know you, you know not just about metaverse <laughs> is even about the digital world uh personalization is certainly going to play an increasing role yeah because your ability to personalize and customize exists today you know i'll give you a very simple example we cover millions of stores in the country our brands are available in about 9 million stores and uh, few millions we cover directly 
directly as in through our distributors. And we are very clear that we would like to customize the assortment for each store. A grocery store, say in Kolaba, and a grocery store in Dhaisar would need a very different sort of assortments. So you can customize it. And similarly, say health and wellness. Yeah, it lends itself to customization to a very big extent based on who you are, what your needs are, and what you want. And you can customize them. So yes, increasingly, you would be moving towards the world. This world of uh, uh, customizing for each individual, and that is going to play a big role, absolutely. Good evening, Mr. Mehta. Oh, uh, good evening. Uh, now, uh, we are talking about uh, Industry 4.0, digital transformation, and Metaverse is just uh, one of the tools in the direction. Uh, my question is, you know, SME is the backbone of uh, uh, That's know, right. uh, Indian economy. That's right. Uh, and uh, Industry 4.0, these all yeah. tools uh, uh, are, are big boys, you know, who can invest in this, yeah. because the failure rate is almost 84%. So SMEs are hesitant to go ahead with this. Can you just uh, throw some yeah, light? No, you're absolutely right. You know, as a FICI president, yeah. uh, we are working on uh, India at 100 strategy, yeah. which we will be unveiling in uh, about a couple of months' time, and where we have gone into very detailed work, what should be the country's strategy for the next 25 years. And one of the things clearly is, when it comes to digitization, or whether it comes, or when it comes to sustainability, yeah, a lot of help will have to be provided to MSMEs. There's no question. Today, if you look at it, MSMEs in India suffer from paucity of finance. Yeah, they suffer from uh, inability to attract good talent. Uh, they suffer from lack of technology. And uh, sustainability, uh, leaving aside even if they understand that they would be not be willing to put in money because there might be initial on cost. Yeah, but we will have to handhold them and take them along. And I think one of the roles of big corporations would be to ensure that MSMEs who are there in their orbit yeah, adopt digitization. I'll give you this example of Shikhar app. You know, the two biggest thing a retailer suffers from, I'm talking of small retailer, is space and money, right? So the Shikhar app allows a retailer not to have large inventories because he doesn't have to wait for a salesman to come to place an order, but he can place an order whenever he wants. So this allows him to operate with much smaller inventories, much less capital. And also, you can recommend to the retailer that, hey, Mr. Retailer, this is the assortment you need to have. Now, there is one more thing we have done together with SBI, that without going to the bank, based on the purchases made of HUL products, SBI will give a loan to the retailer at very competitive rates. So this is how we are trying to help the MSMEs in our orbit. Now this is a role all big companies will have to play. And I, if I may add, I have nothing to disagree with, but I'd only say capital is a big issue and then is mentoring. But the technology problem is solved because there are SaaS startups which lower the cost of utilization of technology today for SMEs. So I think that problem is solved. It's more about capital and mentoring to be able to take the next leap. That's my understanding, but you know. Uh, Ankit, any question? Rana? Sanjeev, thank you. Uh, you know, I got your metaverse bit. So, you know, I run a ecosystem which is in the advertising world. And honestly speaking, you know, no matter what, we are still kind of just right on the edge on metaverse and you know we are discussing very initial conversations that's true and if you have to give me or you know the industry which is the advertising industry and i'm part of most of the forums of the advertising side and the what is the one or two things that you believe that a group or groups like ours or networks like ours in india 
should focus so that we can have a leading conversation in this rather than look at what the European countries, Americans are doing. Yeah. So first important bit is that don't test the water with your toes. Be ready for a full body immersion. Jab tak dubki nahi lagaoge, seekhoge nahi. That's the biggest thing. So experiment, go for it, and that's how you will learn. Yeah, it is not that in the Western world they have perfected it. Yeah, look at automobile industry. And can you imagine that uh, you can create the entire test driving experience on Metaverse? An entire simulator experience on Metaverse? So you have to look at the realm of possibility, understand the technology, and experience, and experiment. That's the only way to learn. Hmm? And if I may ask, uh, again, I know at your level you already explained where you spend your time on. But when you look at the agency ecosystem, and I want a very direct answer from you. This one you ha don't Have they to transform? Yes. Okay, <laughs> thank you for that. We take the last question. If there's any question, as well, I'll, I'll ask a question in close. Hey, Sanjeev, uh, thanks for an excellent presentation. Now, you know, this is not the. What's your name and what do my, you do? My sir? name is Deepak. I lead the data science practice for Publicis Group. Now, you know, you must be you must be investing money in metaverse. So, what is the financial horizon that you're looking at? You know, so think about 15 years back in Facebook. So that it was an emerging technology, yeah. you know, initially there were losses and then eventually yeah. the ROI became positive. That's right. So how are you thinking about you know, it, financially investing it, it, money? You know, the David Dogilvy's famous statement of advertising that half of it works, but you don't know which half. <laughs> Lord Liverium said it, sir. Huh? Lord Liverium said it. No, ha. So I and then David Ogilvy paraphrased yeah. it. Yeah. Now, uh, if you really look at it, the attribution to growth, even for television, is still not a perfect science. If you tell me that, give me this many GRPs, yeah, this reach, this frequency, I'll give you this growth, it doesn't happen. But increasingly, data science allows you to do that. Yeah, you're coming closer to it. Similarly, initially, when we went in for digital, digital is still a bit of a black hole, right? And uh, first is a leap of faith. You need to experiment with it. Then you get into how do you enhance the efficiency and effectiveness. Now this is a journey that goes on. I would believe this would be a similar journey for Metaverse. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, my last question, Mr. Mehta. Nice. Mr. Mehta, you achieved so much. You, you become a FICI president. Uh, you run the largest uh, consumer goods company by market cap, uh, among the largest companies in India by market cap, profitability uh, almost touching $2 billion. Uh, you're very well celebrated as a leader. Uh, your children have graduated from Ivy League colleges, become entrepreneurs. What's your bucket list? What's left? But you haven't lost air yet. But, uh. You know, first I'll tell you is that uh, God has been kind, very kind. And I am immensely grateful. And I've got a huge amount of gratitude, you know, for my parents, for my country, and uh, the entire people who have played a role in my journey. The second is there is so much more yet to be done. And uh, it is not just about growing your business and uh, increasing your EBITDA or profits, which make a difference. Uh, the first important bit is that when I get up in the morning, I am as enthusiastic of starting my day as I was 21 years back when I first became a CEO. Yeah? So I still have that huge enthusiasm. The second important bit is that uh, you don't run the business 
just for cleaning the hair or cleaning the floor or cleaning the clothes. Yeah, you do it for a bigger purpose. And uh, I have a very simple purpose. Uh, because I believe in the infinite capacity of human beings. And uh, I believe that uh, all individuals can do much more than what we have done and achieve much more than what they have achieved. So my purpose is to make heroes out of ordinary human beings. And that's a very simple purpose. And I would like to live my purpose even much beyond my corporate life. Thank you so much. But you tell me, is Dhoni better than Saro Ganguly? You share a birthday with Saro Ganguly and not Dhoni. I know. But uh, I think both have been great captains. If you were to look at uh, Saurabh Ganguly, he, if I were to use the, uh, uh, the oft-used statement which we use in business, that unleash the animal spirits, that's what Saurabh Ganguly did. He made the Indian team break away from the shackles. He was very expressive. I still remember the scene on the Lord's balcony. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, that also came from the confidence that he built in the team. Sure. That you can conquer the world. So I think Saurav Ganguly played an absolutely brilliant role. And uh, Dhoni was a very deep thinking cricketer. He was not a flamboyant, but I believe he was a better creator of a team. Yeah, the ability to get the best out of the team, I think Dhoni did a great job. And we must understand that the leadership is situational. You need a right leader at the right time to make a difference. So I would uh, doff my hat to both Saurabh Ganguly and Dhoni for what they've done to cricket and what they've done to the country. Thank you so much.